Hello, my name is Kayla Fell, and I am the Creative Health Services Clinical Liaison to Mission Kids Child Advocacy Center. When I'm not social distancing, I have a therapy office on site at Mission Kids where I provide trauma focused therapy to children. Uh, Mission Kids asked if I would partner with them for Child Abuse Prevention Month to create a tutorial to help their supporters and maybe kids that are following their social media to make pinwheels so that we can display pinwheels throughout Montgomery County and beyond uh, in acknowledgement of Child Abuse Prevention Month. And I couldn't be happier to help. So you're going to need a few supplies for our tutorial today. Uh, the number one thing you're going to need is a piece of paper. I recommend using a blue piece of paper because blue is the color for National Child Abuse Prevention Month, but you could really use any kind of paper that you have at home. Uh, you could even decorate your paper before you make your pinwheel or afterwards um, to make it look special and unique. Um, I have used crowns and markers to decorate the ones I've made. Um, I've also used stickers, which I thought was pretty cool. So do whatever you want and get creative. Uh, the other thing that you might need in this project is a pair of scissors. So if you have origami paper, uh, your paper is probably already shaped like a square. Um, but those of you who are using a rectangular piece of paper like me, you have a step that um, starts out the tutorial before because um, we need our paper to be a square to start. So you're going to start out by taking the corner of your paper and folding it up to make your paper into a triangle. And the important part about this step is that it splits this corner over here in half. So your paper should look like this. Um, I have some neat construction paper that has two different colors. So you can see that there is a light blue rectangle and a dark blue triangle. Uh, we're gonna use our scissors to cut this light blue triangle or rectangle piece right off. I want to use them for other projects. You might want to do that too. All right, when we open this up, it's a square, which is a cool trick. So the next step we're going to take is folding our blue square or whatever color you have in half. And it does not matter which way you fold it in half because we're going to do it the other way too. Uh, so feel free to start wherever you'd like. Okay, so your paper should look like this. We're gonna open it up again. And from there, we're gonna fold this paper into fourths. Uh, so the way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna take the outer edge and fold it to meet the center line that we've just made with our crease. All right, and then you're gonna do the other side just the same way. So that they meet in the middle. All right, and your paper should look like this. We're gonna open it up, and you should have four sections that you can see, um, along with that diagonal line that we made when we uh, turned our rectangle into a square. The next step is we're gonna fold it the opposite way. And then we are gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna fold it into fourths by uh, taking those outside edges and folding them in to meet that center line. should be able to see lots of squares on my paper and then a line right down a diagonal in the center. I'm going to make another diagonal line going the opposite way. You don't have to take this step, but I found that it makes the next step just a little bit easier. So I'm going to fold my paper into a triangle again. Oops. And it is okay to make mistakes in origami. Um, I think I've made 10 pinwheels in preparation for this tutorial. So you might need to play it back again uh, to try again and that's okay. All right, so our paper should look like this. Now we're gonna lay our paper flat on the table and we're gonna take our paper and fold it back into the center like we did a couple of times before here. 
to our paper looks like this. And the next step, I'm gonna do lying flat. It's the trickiest part of the tutorial. Um, so I'm gonna do it laying flat first and then I'm gonna hold it up and show you what I did. So this part, we're gonna take this top piece of our origami and we're gonna fold it down so that it looks like a little house or a mushroom. I like the idea of it looking like a mushroom though. It's cuter. Like I said, this part's the trickiest part. So um, if you're doing this with kids, they might need uh, adult help. And that's all right. All right. So it should look like this. Um, so what you're going to do again is you're going to take your paper should look like this. And then we're going to take these sides and fold them down. And make it just like this. All right, and now we're gonna do the other side just the exact same way. So we're gonna take it and fold each one of these sides down. Sometimes it's kind of easier to get one side and then the other one will like follow suit, so. So you should end up with a shape that looks a little something like this. Okay, last step. So you're going to have these four triangles on the edges and we're going to choose two. You can choose whichever two you like. Uh, the only thing that matters is that they should be on a diagonal from one another. So I'm going to use this one here and this guy down here. And we're just going to fold them to be facing the opposite direction. So. I'm gonna take this guy and fold him up like that. And this other guy down here and fold him down like this. And there you have it, our finished product. Um, that is a tiny blue pinwheel. And like I said, you can decorate yours. Um, I have one here that I colored with marker. Um, like I said, I put some stickers on one. Um, you could even get a piece of paper and decorate it before and then use that piece of paper uh, to fold into your pinwheel. It's totally up to you. Uh, you could also choose different ways to display these. So maybe you have a straw or a stick and you can use it um, to put this pinwheel in the ground in your garden. I am actually going to put holes in mine uh, and hang them from a string in my windows so that my neighbors can see them when they're walking by and hopefully it will brighten their day just a little bit. Um, I hope that doing this tutorial together has brightened your day a little bit. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of us together creating a pinwheel garden throughout Montgomery County and maybe even further than Montgomery County to acknowledge this important month, Child Abuse Prevention Month. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time of your week with me. And I hope that this is fun and easy for you to do. Um, I hope you all take care and stay safe. Uh, thanks so much.